Hi everyone, it's me again. Um, a couple of people asked about how I made the um, hollow heart and also about how I got the stripes in the hollow heart. So uh, we had a quick chat amongst the admins and decided that I would do a quick video because I can't um, live stream. My workshop is too far from the house to pick up the Wi-Fi. So um, to do the heart, you need a mandrel. I'm going to use a 2.4 millimeter mandrel. I don't know how that works out in um, the American sizes. And I've got a um, Latticino and I've got ivory core with clear over the top. If you haven't got one, use a plain rod or make one yourself. But this is the easiest way to get the stripes in the bead. And I've also got a plain ivory stringer, a shop bought stringer, nothing special, and a razor tool. Now you can use any tool that has got a fairly sharp edge. If you haven't got some sort of razor tool amongst your lamp working equipment, raise it, raid the kitchen, a butter knife, um, just something with a fairly sharp edge on it. Anyway, to, to start making this heart, um, you just need to make, just, uh, if, you're, if you're fairly new to this, it's not a case of just at all, but you need to make a, a hollow bead. And for a hollow, a mandrel wound hollow, you're going to need the best part of a rod of glass surprising how much glass these use. So if you can start off with a fresh rod and then just pull the end to get rid of any scum would be the best thing. If you've never made a mandrel wound hollow bead before, you're literally going to make two discs. And I'm going to make these quite wide apart. Um, the, the wider apart you go, with your discs, then the higher you need to take those discs before you can join them together. So I'm going to put these um, maybe half an inch apart. I'm hoping you can see it. I've swapped the camera angle um, to try and eliminate the light that was um, coming in through the door. And of course now the sun's gone today. It was lovely earlier and the sun's disappeared in the last hour or so and it's quite windy. When you're making these hollows, you need to swap back and forth between discs. If you concentrate too long on one disc, you go in to crack the other side when it goes back in the flames. So keep heating both sides and just keep adding glass. You want to go fairly high. See if I can string it around in a second so you can see. I've got my flame quite low as well. I don't know how well you can see that. There you can see the two discs and how far apart they are. Um, I find that um, keeping the flame fairly narrow for these works quite well. Um, you, you can make them really quickly with a bushier flame, but when you're starting off, start with, with a um, quite a narrow flame and you'll probably find it a bit easier. Now, I'm getting close to the point now where I want to um, start moving these discs closer together. Can you see what I mean about how big these discs need to be? Uh, another piece of advice that might be um, beneficial for you is um, starting off with quite a thin rod of glass. This is probably about 4 mil. So either a really thick stringer or the thinnest 
rod you can find and it just makes it a little bit easier for you so I've started now um, bringing the discs closer together I'll um, swing around again in a minute when I've added this wrap so we're literally edging these discs closer together if you want to see um, a, a really good video of, of making um, the hollow bead itself Ray Skeen does a really nice one he's um, was my very first tutor and I went back for more lessons with Ray later um, and I think I discovered how to do this by accident really after I'd lost the shaping um, on a round bead it had got away from me I was still fairly new and it had got away from me I'm starting now to close up this disc to form an actual bead and you can see how much of the rod um, I've used so that was a full rod still adding gloss, so I'm not quite done yet. When you've gone all the way round and um, joined the discs together, it's probably worth adding an extra wrap around the centre and then just going back, heating a little bit and just checking that you've got no big gaps between your wraps. If you've got really small holes, you'll get away with it because um, as, as the glass starts melting in together um, it'll collapse down onto those holes and fill them in but it, it will mean that you've got a weak spot in those holes so I've gone all the way around now I've added an extra wrap of glass so that's what's left so you can see how much of the rods I used and for a minute I just want to apply the heat to just the upper edges. I don't want to put the whole bead in the flame at the minute. So I'm just catching the edge of the bead with the flame and just starting to warm that all through to get the heat even all the way around again. And just start melting those wraps in. You can see it's pretty untidy at the minute. But that's okay. just part of the process. So as you start getting more heat into this you can put your bead further into the flame. And I'm working quite close to the flame, not for any other reason than I'm short-sighted. I can't actually see if I try and work further away. I've tried using um, my very focals for torching and I just can't get the distance right I find I'm working too far out in the flame so I've gone back to um, glasses free and just my ditties so, but it does mean that I work very close and right over the top of my flame so just keep melting this in I don't know if you can see if the colour is starting to even out now um, as it does that you can add more heat if you want to. I'm going to keep this low flame because I want you to see what I'm doing. Um, but you need to heat up against your mandrel as well, both sides. Swing it round. And just keep heating until all those layers from the wraps that you've put on smooth out. Before you can make your hollow, you literally need to make the hollow beads, for the, so you can make the hollow heart. It's been beautiful here today. The sun was shining earlier, and I've been out in the garden, and I collected a load of veg for um, my Sunday lunch tomorrow. And um, we've had fun with chickens and ducks and all sorts lately. Within the last hour, the sun's gone in, um, and it's gone really quite cold again. And when I say quite cold, I mean about 
15 Celsius. It's not that cold. It just feels cold to me because I'm used to the heat. So we're getting there slowly with this. What you'll find happens with the heart, um, with the heart sorry, with the, um, the hollow bead, is it will start to collapse in on itself and then it'll open back out and the surface will smooth. So if you think it's starting to collapse and you, it's coming away from you, just take it out of the flame and keep turning. There's no issue with that. That's, that's fine to keep doing that. And you can keep taking it in and out of the flame as long as you want. I'm hoping um, that moving this camera is giving you a better view of what I'm doing. I'm not quite sure. Until I look back at it, I'm, I'm not sure as to um, how good a view it's giving you of what I'm doing. So we're almost there now. I've almost got a hollow, a round hollow bead with dimples on it. hold it in one position for a second or two so that the bottom starts to droop. So you're taking it away from the round and elongating that bottom. Heat it a bit more and allow it to droop. If you use the, this um, method of just controlling your heat and your flow of your glass, you should get a nice smooth finish without it stretching too far and, and ruining the bead holes that you've worked hard to get nice. So can you see that elongating now? So now once that's set up and the glow's gone off that, which it looks like it hasn't on the, the screen to me, but it has, the glow's gone off it your razor tool, keep the top half, so the part that's not drooped down, you want to heat that just a little bit, just enough to move that glass, push in and turn. And you need, you'll need to do this several times to get it right. You don't want to cut all the way through this glass, but you want to put big enough indents in so it is a little bit of a slow process because you don't want to push the glass too far. And once you've got those pretty much aligned where you want them, you can go back and alter them again later if it's not quite enough. Um, but when you think you've got that pretty much aligned, if you want to split that shoulders a little bit more, adds a little bit more heat to the top, put your blade in and wiggle and it gives you a little bit more of an indent. But back to the bottom and I'm going to use um, my stringer but before I um, start elongating the, the tail of the heart to give this a really good warm up again and let it droop some more. As far as I can, I want to do this with gravity and as little tools as possible. So the, the top is quite cool, the bottom is really glowing. I'm hoping you can see that and leave it dragged down some more. Just let gravity do its thing. Blade where I want it to be. 
and you can move and play with this. If you're not happy with it, melt it in, make it back into a round bead and start again. Pretty much there, I don't know how well you can see that. I'm applying most of the heat to the tip again, but taking the rest of the bead round through the flame just to keep the heat in it. And now I'm just going to touch. And again, this is probably going to take you several attempts, and that's fine, it's pointless rushing these things. several attempts to get it how you want it. It's fine. It doesn't matter. but you're not, the glass is not really hot, it's just enough to move. And I want to put another cut in there, so I want to add, or not put another one, but actually take the cut down further than I've got it, so that it makes more sense to my eye. And there we go. And then, if you, you can either leave it like that, a little bit of decoration. Now when I did the demo one, I put um, heart over the shoulder. So if I just do a three petal heart. When you're making these petals, um, you actually want the dots to be bigger than you think you do in the beginning and you'll get a nice finish. If you add a little bit of clear over the top as well, it seems to help keep the scores and, and definition um, within the petals. So I've literally added three dots. And they're quite big ones. And I'm gonna put a little bit of clear over the top. in the heat onto the actual dots there and then giving the little rest of it a little just a little touch of heat just to keep enough heat in there so it doesn't crack. With the razor tool again take your first dot and through the center and the same with the other two through the center slice through the centre. You can push these if you don't get it quite right. Just go back to it and push it until you're happy. And that is it pretty much done. There you go. 